Okay, now we're going to talk about functions. And a function is a piece of code that does something, but it also returns a value. So up till now, we were dealing with sub-procedures, all these sub-procedures. Here's a sub-procedure. All these sub-procedures, they just do something. They don't return any values. Now we're going to deal with functions that also, besides doing something, they return a value. So let's insert a module here. And I'm going to name it uh, functions. And if I close the properties window, I'm going to double click. And I want to write a function. So how do you write a function? Well, you start off writing a function with the keyword function. Then you put the name of your function. And the name of my function, you know, it could be anything, but I'm going to put return one. And then after the name, you put open parentheses. And if there's any parameters, you put the parameters here. For instance, I could put int one as integer, and there's a parameter. But I'm not going to have parameters in this function, so I'm just going to have uh, open and close parentheses. And then if I hit enter, you need the keyword, the keywords end function at the end of your function. Um, you also need you don't need, but it's 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 proper to have the data type of what's being returned. So this function is is going to return an integer, and so I'm going to put as integer. And now I can write my code. So now this is the framework of how do you write a function? You use the keyword function, the name. You have your open and close parentheses. You can put parameters inside, and then you can, and then you you should put the data type of what's being returned and then end function. So now let's write a simple function that just returns the number one. So to do that, you have to assign something to the name of the function. The name of our function is return one. So I'm just gonna do return one is equal to one. That's our function, this is it. Um, it's very simple, but what's important to note is when you What's being returned has to be assigned to the name of the function, meaning here's a name of a function. I have to assign something to that, and you do that right here. Like 1 is equal to return 1. So now we can call this function in Excel by just doing something like this. You can use functions that you write in Excel, like return 1. I could type it or I could just do this, return 1, and hit Enter and there's the value 1. These are called user-defined functions. So this function didn't exist. But now you as a VBA programmer, you can write any function you want and you can make it available to people at your firm, at your at, at work and they can start using functions that you write. Um, and we just saw how to do it. I mean very simply we wrote a simple function. Um, you can also use functions in your VBA code. So let me do let me write a subroutine here. Sub test functions. And now I want to uh, let me do dim x as integer. Let me put option explicit at the top because that's important. And now I could do x is equal to return 1. And then I can do message box x, message box x. So now I can run this code. Oh, I spelled it wrong. It's my fault. So now when I spell it right, I can run the code and I get the value one in a message box. Very cool, right? Um, that is what functions are. They do something, in this case, they, they take the value one and they return a value. And in this case, the value is one. But functions can be very complex. So let's look at another function. Let's write another function that takes a parameter. So let's write a function that'll convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So let's let's write that. Function, and the name of this function is going to be convert to Celsius. S-E-L, 
SIUS. And it's going to take a parameter, which is going to be the temp in Fahrenheit. Um, and that is going to be of type double because it can take decimals. And then what's going to be returned is a double. Okay, so how does this work? So how do you convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius? Well, you all you do, the answer is going to be uh, temp Fahrenheit. I'm just going to copy this. Temp Fahrenheit minus 32 times 5 divided by 9. So, um, this this function takes a temperature in Fahrenheit and it returns a temperature in Celsius and that what's returned is going to be of data type double and notice um, <clears throat> the value that's being returned is assigned to the name of the function so here's the value that's being returned you know this right here that value is going to be assigned to the name of the function. Here's the name of the function. I'm assigning it this value. So now we can test this function. We could go to Excel. We could do the same thing over here. Equals uh, convert to Celsius. I can take a, a Fahrenheit temperature, like if it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and I hit enter, that's 37.77 degrees Celsius. And that's, that's your user-defined, that's called a user-defined function. And you could write all kinds of, of uh, functions, all kinds of user-defined functions to make your life easier. So let's call this in, call this through another, another uh, subroutine. So I'll do dim y as double, and I'll do y is equal to converts, uh, double click this, copy it, and I'll put in 100, and then I'll do message box Y. And now when I run this, I mean, I'm just going to comment out this message box. When I run this, oops, I keep spelling things wrong. When I run it, I get 37.778, or, you know, exactly what I got in Excel. So I cl click OK, and th that's what functions are. Um, that's pretty straightforward, right? All a function does is do something. In our case, it it does this calculation, and then it returns it. And how, how does it return it? It returns it by you know, assigning it to the name of the function. That's the critical point, because uh, what a lot of people do you know, I've gotten emails from people, and they'll write a function, and then they'll they'll assign it to something other than the name of the function, like they'll assign it to Z or something, and they'll and they'll send me an email and go, well, why isn't this working? I'm getting an error. I'm not getting the right answer. Um, it's because you don't. Well, we could see if we try to run this, you get an error. It says variable not defined. Uh, but if I do dim z, watch dim dim z as double, and then I try to run this, you get zero here, and so I'll get emails, and people will be like, "Well, here's here's my calculation. Why isn't it returning? You know, why isn't the function returning that?" And I'll be and I'll say, "Well, you just have to do this." Uh, you have to assign it to the name of the function. I mean, it's very simple, but that's one of the most common errors people people make. Um, but that's that's all functions are. They're not difficult. They're very uh, powerful because now, you know, you could have a very complicated calculation in Excel like this. You know, this is not very complicated, but you could have a very complicated comp uh, calculation. You know, it could be very lengthy, and you could just reduce it to a function. You know take some parameters, insert some parameters here, uh, like if you had other parameters, whatever, um, you know, temp2 as double, and you could use that variable in your calculation. So 
you can reduce you can reduce writing code writing of writing formulas in Excel by doing something like this right all you have to do now is pass in one one number and you get back your answer versus if you wanted to do it without that function you would have to write more uh, write more text in Excel so functions are great time savers you could write user defined stuff what's important is assigning the value to the name of the function and then getting your data types correct so these data types apply to the parameters and this data type applies to what's being returned okay so that's it for functions so now you're getting to the point where we can start to leverage all the code that Microsoft has written for us if you're wondering you know where is this going uh, it might not seem like you know a lot right now in these early videos but you already do because everything from sort of here on out is using functions and sub sub procedures that Microsoft apply already gives you in libraries that we're going to look at coming up in the near future so there's thousands and thousands of lines of code that have functions sub procedures you don't have to you don't have to write them all you need to know is that they exist and now you know what a sub procedure is what a function is what a parameter is you know what data types are all that stuff variables and now you're going to be comfortable when we start talking about how to interact with Microsoft's uh, functions and sub procedures and we're going to look at that next